Hey y'all, welcome back to another virtual education and self-isolation. I'm Whitney and I'm a records assistant with the Utah SHPO. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about Utah's state prison dump. Um, I got involved with this project last year and it's been a really fun research rabbit hole ever since. So let me just pull up my presentation really quick. And let's get started. In order to explain my research with the prison dump, I'm gonna to talk to you about early American institutional confinement, give an overview of Utah's prison history, and then talk about the Utah State prison dump and my future research directions with the site. In the 18th century, prisons weren't really a thing yet. Instead, they were workhouses and jails to hold convicts awaiting trials. Because these were only temporary holding facilities, conditions of these institutions were quite grim. Convicts lived in their own feces, had little to no rights, silence was enforced at all times, many convicts were in isolation, kind of like how we are today, and the convicts that did receive food were the ones that could pay for it. Many of them died because of these hostile conditions. If convicts did survive, it wasn't certain that their life was safe because the death penalty was a very popular outcome for serious offenses. Lucky for convicts in the 19th century, however, the death penalty was becoming less popular as a form of punishment. Instead of execution, the idea of rehabilitation of convicts was um, becoming more popular. Um, because these institutions were spawning mental illness themselves, and because of that, prisoners couldn't be brought back into society, and um, that was an issue. So, the Auburn system was developed in the 19, or sorry, 1820s to help rehabilitate uh, convicts by teaching them personal discipline, respect for work, property, and other people, and as a result, prisoners were allowed to work and produce goods, um, recreate, and have personal time to themselves. So, um, on to Utah. Mormon immigrants migrated to the territory in 1847, and only seven years later, the penitentiary was built and operating within a year. At the time, it was operated by the federal government. It was first constructed with 16 cells and made of adobe brick. The territorial uh, penitentiary had an orchard and exercise yard, and some schooling was even offered um, in the later years uh, to inmates. Um, outside the walls was a farm and inmates could do work. In 1896, Utah became a state and um, the state took over the prison's operations from the federal government. Expansions were made over the years, but in the early 1900s, the prison had grown to be a four-story, 200-cell establishment. Inmates also received movie-watching privileges, and they were allowed to build their own swimming pool. However, by 1940, the penitentiary was outdated and overflowing with more than 400 prisoners. Since then, this prison has been demolished and turned into Sugar House Park. Um, just a little side note that I learned a couple of days ago. In 1888, Salt Lake County had a rotary gel this was the second jail built in Salt Lake County, and um, it was at 268 West, 200 South, where the post office is now. It was probably built to replace the Sugar House Prison, and if you can imagine a merry-go-round jail, that's basically what it was. Um, this prison revolved slowly and continuously, and the whole system could be manned by a single guard. 
This, sis this system promised maximum security, and it worked for a time with only one escapee. Concerns about prisoner safety um, was what shut it down, though. Accidents to prisoners' limbs were pretty common. Anyway, uh, back to the Sugar House prison and um, other Utah prisons. Because the Sugar House prison was outdated, the new prison had to um, be built. So a spot was selected um, for the Draper prison at the south end of the valley, and the prison was finished by 1951. 575 prisoners were moved from the Sugar House prison to Draper. The new prison had a farm, a um, meat and dairy processing facility, a cannery, and an, uh, an automotive shop, and a couple of other vocational training facilities for inmate employment. But what did they do with all their garbage? So um, the prison dump was established at the same time that the prison was, and we believe that it housed all of the garbage from that institution. Um, interestingly enough, Salt Lake County had its own landfill at the time, but for some reason it was decided um, to use um, the, the dump for uh, all of its garbage disposal pretty close to the prison. Um, however, it quickly became a spot for prisoners to escape and cause a lot of trouble. Inmates would hide in garbage cans and um, go to the dump, and there were even some rumors of contraband being smuggled there. By the 1970s, state officials, including the governor at the time, uh, wanted the prison dump closed. When my colleagues and I first visited the site, the prison dump, um, we weren't sure if the dump was exactly connected to the prison, but we sure did find some artifacts that led us to believe that, like um, bones that were connected to the dairy and meat processing facility, stuff from the automotive shop, and of course a cannery, along with other prisoner goods used every day. This is a Xylon cup made specifically for correctional institutions because it can't be shattered and it can't, it can't be sharpened. So this is a perfect everyday use item that will probably live forever because it's plastic. So whose trash is it? Well, technically it's yours. The prison dump is um, on property managed by forestry, fire, and state lands um, under the Utah Department of Natural Resources. Since then, it has uh, been covered by Phil moved from Bangor Highway, though. A couple things that we have learned is this is the only dump associated with incarceration in the state that we know of. Um, since the Sugar House prison has been made into a park, there is no evidence left as to where they might have dumped their trash. Trash from this dump is evidence of change in rehabilitation efforts and the use of the Auburn system. Where concentrations are exposed, we are able to find discarded newspapers um, and food packaging and utensils that give us recites precise dates for um, deposition. An interesting topic about the prison dump is that there was a negative view on how the area was used by prisoners, but not the trash itself and the pollution it was probably causing being right next to a river. 
future directions for the site is um, we want to understand how the prison dump reflects change in incarceration efforts. We want to continue doing field work to identify activity areas of depositional events. We also want to um, kind of decipher between day-to-day -day versus vocational cultural material. And we are continuing to find comparative data sets from other contemporaneous sites between 1950 and the 1960s. We're also hoping to interpret the site and show how it shapes Utah's history and Utah's prison history. So I want to thank everyone for coming to this presentation and um, just giving this a listen. And I hope you guys are doing great. Thanks.